Okay, what's up? I'm here with Sega. Manny, what's up, dude? What's up? Right now, we're headed over to iBuyPower for the build stream, which is going to be a lot of fun. How are you feeling about visiting iBuyPower, man? Biggest system integrator in the country. I'm excited. I really want to see what they do behind the scenes, and I'm really excited to check out the Y60 in factory. I don't know if we'll see the the yeah. magic of where they do that at. We'll see where they designed it for sure. Yeah, I really want to see it. It's a case I've been eyeing myself, but I don't know how good it's going to be. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a good time. So let's check it out. Hand on camera thing. So I'm here with King and Brad. We're going to be doing a tour of uh, of the factory. I buy power where the magic happens. What's up, guys? How are you? Good. good. Very yeah. good. Yeah, yeah same. It's been a Casual, you know, low work day afternoon. No, just no. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We are absolutely like jam packed, ready to go for TwitchCon. Leaving tomorrow, right? Leaving yep. tomorrow. Yeah, we're yeah. seeing you guys there too. So yeah, you know. there will be some things probably blurred out, just so you know. But that um, that's how these things go. This is a uh, some proprietary info. That's okay. So let's uh, let's get started. I'm excited. This video is sponsored by VIP CDK Deals. CDK Deals is an online marketplace that offers game keys for several different platforms and genuine software licenses at drastically reduced prices. You can even use code BRAID25 to get an additional 30% off. Here's how it works. Here we have an OEM license for Windows 10 Pro. Of course, all Windows 10 Home and Pro keys can be later upgraded to Windows 11 at no charge. Keep in mind that you'll need a new key if you build a new system or make major hardware changes. OEM keys cannot be used to upgrade from Windows 10 Home to Pro. So make sure you know which version you have installed. Here in the cart, you can use code BRAID25 to get an additional 30% off. So an OEM copy of Windows 10 Pro will drop from $22.72 to just $15.90. After your purchase is complete, click View Keys slash Codes. Click Get the Key and copy it. Then go to your Windows search bar, type out Activate, and click Activation Settings. My Windows install is already activated, so I'll be replacing it, but yours should just say Activate Windows. Paste in the key, click Activate, and you're done. Thank you, CDK Deals, for continuing to support the channel. Uh, these are all conference rooms. A lot of our partners come in here. Um, now that we've opened up uh, post-COVID, right. uh, a lot of the partners have come back, so we've taken them uh, into our conference rooms. I mean, I don't know if you want to peep it, if anybody's in here right now, but... All those iBuyPower branded chairs are wow. finally getting used again. A lot of, um, lot of our gear iBuyPower chairs are there. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, um, so it's a fun little conference room. Um, we have like three of them just for any of our partners to come out, uh, want to use them. We extend our services out to them. Um, so you're going to see the periphery of the offices. These are all like executive offices um, except for uh, purchasing. Right. Um, and IT kind of house themselves in that area. Uh, so what you're staring at too, so um, marketing's end is uh, basically this half of the room, um, the further half, and then uh, over on this way, we have some e-tail retail um, and all of our graphics team is this right. way. Yeah. Uh, and then um, all of this kind of supports both brands. So all of all of iBuyPower's brands, uh, which include iBuyPower and Height, are supported um, effectively by marketing and, okay, and so all of our they're, they're not cordoned off some of people. <laughs> no, no, no. Now we're really trying to make sure that there's really good synergy because what whatever Height produces as a product, um, it effectively um, is a learned product from all of iBuyPower's 23 years in business. Right. Big um, benefit there for Height. Yeah, sure. so so everything that we do is trying to uh, improve on the product line and or assembly line and a lot of feedback from our own builders and customers. Um, to make sure that I, I, th I think I think product. there's there's sort of a lack of, of um, it, it's it's difficult I think for um, for consumers to understand what goes into something like making a case you don't just you don't just beep boop and then it out comes a case there's you know all the tooling costs and and R and D that go into that mm -hmm. that's and, Brad yeah. yeah yeah that's Brad over here so. Uh, it, uh, that's something that I'm hoping we can show a little bit of here because um, th that, that sort of, whenever there's something like, oh, I don't like this little thing about a case, they should fix that. You, no, no, you don't just, <laughs> well, our injection molds, yeah, the, sure, we'll just fi fix our, you know, $100,000 injection molds or whatever, sure, just like that, no. Um, and of course, sheet metal tooling and all that stuff. If it's a huge deal in the fact that you guys are doing that fresh, you're not, you're just coming out, that's really cool. I like to see that stuff. Next, we'll go into the lab. Um, so it's my department where we do a lot of the product development and testing. Okay. Um, so normally we don't have cameras in here, but you know, oh, make no. a, we'll make an exception. Well, I Restricted that. access. You hear that? Before they um, change their minds. Get... So, <laughs> yeah, like I said, um, a lot of what goes on in here is about the majority of it is testing new components, um, right? So. 
uh, new platforms, new whatever comes out, um, we get samples, hopefully usually early, um, and then we do a bunch of testing to make sure that uh, you know it's gonna be compatible with the system configurations that we put together. Guys, Rob, What's up, Rob? Rob Taylor, <laughs> you know where he is? There he is. What's up, man, how are you doing? Good, Good to see you. Good to see you. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, we, um, you know, like, uh, for example, the new AMD um, AM5 platform, uh, you know, we get samples of the new uh, 670 motherboards and the new CPUs, and we do power and thermal testing, right? We need to know, like, what size, uh, capacity of power supplies we need, what types of coolers we need. Is right. it gonna cause any problems, right? Is there a, right? there's not a lot of big issues in terms of, like, new connectors and interfaces um, for this platform, but sometimes, you know, the new thing will come out, we gotta check to 12 see. 12 VH power. Yeah, well, yeah, uh, yeah that'll, that's a big deal coming yeah, up. Yeah. Um, that we're we're in the middle of uh, figuring our way through. Are you guys testing a lot of ATX 3.0 power supplies? See which ones you want to go with, that kind of thing. Yeah, the the difficult part is that um, you know we kind of have to lead the target by quite a long time, right? In terms of like the the cards that are going to eventually need these power supplies haven't come out yet. Right. Um, so we basically have the 3090 Ti as the only thing we could as the we can pick. really test with. Um, yeah. And then even then, like like I said, lead time on power supplies is you know six seven months, even if you know uh, what's coming. So we had to already make all of those decisions right. a few months ago. Right. And yeah. we're getting our samples, or we have gotten our samples, and we test those, make sure that there's not going to be any issues with that. A lot of people don't realize is um, you know big SIs actually we are kind of the guinea pig for a lot of these things, <laughs> right? So uh, you know there w w when manufacturers send out. Um, samples for review right they kind of cherry pick like we got well this is the motherboard we want you to use right oh, okay and this it, we've we've tested all the processors here's this one right like, this is the kit of ram that we recommend for this if you're going to be doing a review but there's a lot of like you know i'm sure you get a reviewer yeah, guide i, I got that guy best practices yeah. on everything um, and it's like i got the guide didn't get the parts that they <laughs> sometimes will send with they'll send with it so i was like Oh well, I'll do the best I can. Mm -hmm. Sure, yeah, and yeah, I got—I did get to, to to stream a Zen 4 system on launch day, but I didn't have it before that. I did get the guide though, so mm -hmm. I, see, I see all these things where it's even like re results of testing included in there, mm -hmm. and I can't like, hey guys, check this out. You know, that's that's part yeah, of the thing. Yeah, it's it's funny for us because you know people assume like, oh, we're the first people to be able to see like how fast this part is, and like we don't even care about that. At that point, it's it's is it going to cause problems? Reliability. Right? So we, yeah. RMAs, RMAs are just that's like, it's a huge, a huge concern because mm -hmm. I mean, you, you, you want you don't want something that's going to be like, hey, we have about a fifty percent chance of an RMA here. Yeah. That's un untenable mm -hmm. completely. Yeah, so I can yeah. see. So, that so we try problem. to go off the rails for um, whatever the testing that we're supposed to be doing, and that's just because like when it when the product actually comes out, you know, we don't know what kind of strange use case that no one planned for where someone is going to order a system configured a certain way and that's not the ideal you know configuration but that's the way that they need it for their use right like right. some huge amount of memory like on a low end processor for example and of course in your configurator there'll be sort of curated configurators mm -hmm. where it's only stuff that works together for the most part but you can still say try to fit you know you, you can do like a you know 12900K and a 3090Ti with a 750 watt power supply. Mm -hmm. And we know that that might not be ideal. Yeah, in yeah. that specific case, the configurator will tell you, no, you need a bigger power supply. Right. Um, right. Yeah, so th there, there are things where like, you know, this will never work where yeah. the configurator will stop people. Right. But, but there are other things like, um, one of the things we've been trying to work on is uh, expansion cards. So, um, you know, if somebody adds like a USB expansion card and a Wi-Fi expansion mm -hmm. card and a sound card, um, that, you know, sometimes there's weird overlaps with the motherboard, especially with USB expansion, where the chipset on the expansion is the same as the one on the motherboard, and then you get a blue screen. Um, right. So those are things that we also have to try and test for. Right. At least, so if it does come up, we know why it happened. Why don't you show us around a little bit, though? Oh, so yeah, what sure. We're looking at here. Um, yeah, so uh, you're talking about case design earlier today. Um, you can see sort of our graveyard of, uh, of of old cases that may or may not have ever come out. That was super cool. Yeah, so that... The Element... The uh, uh, Element CL? Element CL, I yeah. think that is the one from CES. That's it super now, cool. It has now been decommissioned. Um, and like I said, you can see a few... Like as most of these eventually did come out on um, mute, but some of these, like I believe this was the slate case that we never released. What, uh, this uh, one here? The, the one with the kind of portal looking thing in the middle. Right, yeah. Um, and then the one next to it was the original Trace. That's a five-year-old 
case at this point, but we keep some of them around just because uh, if people have questions about um, compatibility or parts for like, the, the case is long end of life, but we keep the one laying around at least if we need to look at something. I thought that, I mean, there, there's a lot that, of course, it goes into case design, but I thought that the LM, uh, CL was really cool because it's like you're bringing liquid, hardline liquid mm -hmm. tuning to the masses. So it's you know, like, hey, you don't have to build this, you don't have to customize this, and we can produce this. Mm -hmm at a level that is not normally possible. Yeah. So I thought that was I thought that was just a it's really like the, cool the idea. The most successful drop tested unit of all time. Oh yeah, yeah. it's actually yeah, <laughs> it's <laughs> holding the GPU right yeah. there. Like, it's the least yeah. amount of, of shipping damage we've ever had with a in, in a hardline liquid cooled yeah. system. Um, so it's, since I never saw the materials that came with one of those, what um, what kind of maintenance info, info did you provide to people? Uh, so we gave that? them a guide for um, for changing the coolant or for flushing the coolant or replacing right. it. Right. That's pretty much what most folks are gonna be doing. Um, we also do have guides for if they need to uh, change the GPU out or take tubes out, something like that. The original water block it's, from CES of the Element CL. Yeah, maybe, because it's got the unfinished uh, mounting bracket on it. That <laughs> it is. should be painted black. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of mounting brackets, this, this um, I know that for some OEMs, mm -hmm. that's a thing. So. Because there's so many different cases available, if you just use a configurator, I imagine that's not really something you can consistently, like you can't have, develop one for mm -hmm. every one of those. But for like your own cases, is that something that's, as they're getting heavier and heavier on the GPU scale, is that uh, something we're gonna see more of? Uh, yeah, actually that's something that we've been dealing with the last couple of generations. So our, um, uh, the cases that we design ourselves, right, are that go into most of the like mass market systems they do have um, a spot for a mounting bracket. Not every card is compatible with right. it, but most of the larger ones actually do have uh, mounting holes that are in a standard spot um, for them. So most of like the 30, 70, 80, 90 cards. Um, and so if we can pair those together, we can use a mounting bracket to help hold it in place. Um, one of the things we've been uh, experimenting with over the last several months on our configurator is actually allowing customers to um, opt in for a service where the graphics card is shipped uninstalled. And I've, 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 I've pointed that out a bunch and I'm like, guys, this is this is great right here. Yeah. And we all sent me a system like that. And I was like, yes, this is the way. And for certain cards, you know, they're because of the way that our business works, where we allow people to configure whatever system they want, like we can't we can't say no, you can't have this case because it doesn't have a mounting bracket, right? So if they want to order like a Corsair case, which, you know, we didn't design the case. It's a great right. case, we didn't design it though, so there's no spot for that bracket um, that we try to encourage people, hey, you know, like we're actually right now, we're actually, we're giving people a discount if they choose it um, because right. it's, it's so beneficial on both sides. We're like, you know, the reduced chance of RMA, so they, they get a system that's, you know, more, it's the most common damage we have right. is the graphics card. So more likely that they're gonna get a perfectly good system uh, on delivery um, and it cuts down on RMA overhead for us for we don't have to replace cards if there is a problem. And you know, also just sort of like a small benefit is the graphics card is usually the component that a user will upgrade first. Right. Maybe RAM, maybe storage, but graphics card is the first big one. And, be um, and honestly, that does make sense. It make the biggest difference in gaming and all mm -hmm. that. So yes, and yeah. So given them the experience of like, hey, here's how you would do that. Okay, now we know if we ever have to replace it, like we already have instructions for how to do that. Right. One complaint that I've had about, about that is that the, the shipping options are so far down on the configurators. Yeah. I sh I'm sure many never even <laughs> encounter them because you can add to carpet. So I'm, I was actually thinking, hey, page in between, add to cart, cool, bring it up. Okay, cool, before they can even check out, how do you want us to pack this PC? Mm -hmm. Because that's something that I'm, I, I imagine yeah, we are, gets over. Yeah, we are, it is actually something that we've, we're, we're thinking about um, either just full on throwing into the configurator, maybe A-B testing, um, especially with the next generation of cards, which are even bigger. Yeah. Um, is that we because we kind of need to get that more in people's faces um it, like i said it's it's beneficial to both sides um yeah keep, keep on with the tour what okay. else are we looking at sure. here? guys this is something i said to them earlier but sometimes the best food comes out of a messy kitchen if this place was perfectly pristine it'd mean you're not working yeah, we're not doing anything yeah you know. um yeah, so um on the subject of design um i don't know if he's busy or can just say hi, but this is Alex, he's our industrial designer. Hey, yeah. Braythorn, nice yeah. same here. Um, so most of the uh, in-house iBuy power cases that you've seen, um, especially the chassis component, um, he's been 
Probably okay. 90 percent. I'm responsible for all the back parts. <laughs> oh, okay. Good to know, everybody. All the parts. Rob kind of leads the product direction for all the Hyatt products, um, and since Alex is our designer, you know they work together. Work together on, a lot. Yeah. yeah, fixing, you know, basically merging uh, industrial design to mechanical. That's a whole process on its own. So you have like right. the the artist that says, "I want it to look this way," and then you know the factory that says, "You can't make it that way." Right. And then Alex helps to kind of bridge those two. While, huh. while keeping as much of the original design as we can. But I, of course, I do see a ton of 3D printing here, and of course now that's such a huge help, I imagine, in, in development, in, in R&D. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that would be something that could cost us weeks in terms, like, Brad and I have been here long enough that we've been doing this without the 3D printing, and so you have an idea, you do the 3D, you send it to the factory, they rework it, they send it back, then you send it back to them, they finally get it mocked up and then they ship it over here and you're like a month and a half in already. Mm -hmm. Whereas here it could be like, hey Alex, try this. Yeah. Alex spends half a day, sends it to the printer, we come back in tomorrow, it's done. I think something too, like, is just a testament of us having a, a US-based design team too, is to be connected to our community and connected to our consumer more than we would if we were, if we had like an overseas team. Right. Um, so that this communication level is so quick um, mm -hmm. that it, it gives us a huge advantage to be up to speed with our consumers, whether we have to design something new for the next generation or adapt really, really quickly. Yeah. That we see it on our line here. That it's, yeah. That it's here with our line. Um, uh, versus like you know, completely overseas. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, I'm glad that it, it, I'm glad that it's it, it seems it seems to be working out really well here the way that y'all are doing it. I mean, you've been kind of at a at a specific pace, you know, at a certain pace, kind of cranking things out. You can even say b because of how long it used to take to get those designs, those initial designs done. So I'm I'm really I don't know I'm I'm really excited because the way that how long iBuy Power has been around and the kind of support and knowledge that that brings into the new hype products and everything like that's just really cool. Speaking of cases real quick, there's, mm -hmm. there is one more thing that, uh, one thing I brought up at uh, PAX West and it had to do with the fact that you were using the same, uh, for, the, for the, what is it, the, for the mesh one, mm -hmm. for the mesh front paneled one, you were using the same, same chassis, um, but a different front panel for mm -hmm. that to get the mesh on there. And my idea was like, hey, why don't you sell out for those in the gear store? as an option. So someone who previously brought, that up, bought yeah. that case can order that front panel if they're going to get a hard, hotter running GPU later on mm -hmm. or, you know, hotter running CPUs, uh, just swap out the front panel and even go for like maybe do some, a couple of colors of it or whatever. And I mean, that's, that might be kind of cool to sort of make something that could be customized like that. But I think uh, it was mentioned that that's, that's not, that now you're on a different on a different chassis, or that was an older chassis? Uh, yeah, so, I mean, so it is It is something that's in our minds for the the current generation that we're working on. So, like, right now we're on our Generation 6, which is in the market, and we're working on our Generation 7 um, case products. Uh, and that we do want to, uh, obviously, at this point, mesh isn't just, like, a nice-to-have thing. It's almost mandatory yeah. for the newer generation of parts, right? Like. Yeah. Um, the high-end RTX cards and new processors just generate a lot more heat than they used to. Um, so, you know, we are trying to figure out a way to make that work. Um, but that the idea that you had brought up at PAX of actually going back to a previous chassis and designing a panel for that, um, we have actually been exploring that. Uh, awesome. We are just trying to figure out a way to make a business case for it. Right. Um, so, you know, you had brought up earlier about like tooling costs, right, where, you know, it can cost you know, fifty to a hundred thousand dollars to tool just a case front panel, depending on how complex it is. Right. Um, and so it'd just be a matter of like, what's, how many of these would people be able to purchase? Um, you know, and, and we also how many to, would be interested? Yeah, and the the way that we are trying to make that work is um, to actually release it as its own case, because then you know we can use some of our system sales to help carry that right. Um, right. that volume and then offer the, the, the front panel um, on the side. So that is in the works. Um, as far as ETAs go, we're just we're still trying to figure out when that might land. Um, but yeah, it, it, is, it is definitely actually something that we have kind of taken to heart and, and been working on 
um, to offer to past customers. I don't know how far back we'll be able to go, right? Um, but like the a lot of the systems that you reviewed, so like the, it was on the I believe the Slate, Slate Hako. Hako. Yeah. yeah. So that chassis we are working on a panel for. Awesome. Um, so awesome. that is actually a prototype of a wall-mounted PC that we never even started on. Um, <laughs> and we would have always hoping to bring it to an event, but we never had the uh, the time to do it. It does look like a TV. But like, Sounds impressive. if you opened it up, there was oh, sick. the okay. beginnings. <laughs> Oops. Right, Here, I'll help you out there. Ice LED so, strips all around it. Yeah, so the, like I said, it's it's really really early on. Is that a in, P5? Uh, I think it's a P3. P3, right? Yeah. Smaller one. Yeah. And then we were gonna build like a back plane to to do all That's the different. reservoirs and hard line yeah, loop and stuff. Cool. But you can see even like the glue for the LEDs is starting to give up. Yeah, and this is your LCD display here. Yep. This whole thing, man, that's such a sick idea. I love that. But yeah, let's uh, let's go through the factory if it's if that's okay. Yeah. But do we need hard hats? Uh, no, <laughs> no, no, no. All right, guys. I'll see you around. Like I said, kind of in backwards order, but this is our shipping dock, so nothing really super exciting here. But this is just where. I systems... mean, nothing super exciting. Just like thousands of gaming PCs. Yeah. <laughs> Boring. So this is where stuff gets <laughs> staged uh, before it ships out to wherever. It needs to go probably given how many there are probably best by amazon or walmart yeah um, over here main production area um so we have two production lines <laughs> uh this is our second smaller production line um right now this one is a, kind of not doing a whole lot we're in the middle of what we would consider like the slow season that's a great sound i love that sound oh no way. yeah when i want that as my ringtone <laughs> it comes and goes but when it's here it's bad okay I, hopefully the mics can't pick that up. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, so um, our one of our two production lines, uh, the other one's more exciting, so we'll go there yeah. after this. Um, but well, during the busy season, so as we get up towards uh, like the end of this month, and especially into November, um, this will be like Monday. super crazy right. busy with people building systems for the holiday. Um, yeah, it's not something that you can be like, okay, guys, it's a week to Black Friday. Let's get to it. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. There's a lot. It, there's almost like a month-long run-up to to that. Um, these is this is more of the staging um, for systems. This is Jesus, man. Uh, again, mostly <laughs> probably Best Buy, Amazon, uh, yeah. Walmart. Uh, I was gonna say this is like literally the volume of the computers that you're seeing here is uh, why we're so grateful to have like a really strong lab and product team that oh, yeah. makes sure our configurators and our RDYs are compatible to the best of their ability to do so. Right. Because the volume uh, justifies the means of making sure that it's uh, all compatible together. Exactly. Yeah. I, I mean. That's the thing is, if there's a, if there's an issue built into like something right. in the system, it's like, and you ship out thousands of those, you have thousands of issues. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, quick question though. So, whenever someone sees um, same day ready systems, right? Because those mm. can be different from the ones that go out to you know, Best Buy and Amazon, all that. There's some mixed around in here. I see the the, the brown boxes over there, basically, right? Uh, those would be most likely an RDY system made in not one of our cases. Okay. So we do have some that are in uh, Lee and Lee cases. Michael two mesh. Yeah, um, yeah, that's probably what those are. Most of the ones that are made in our own cases will ship in the uh, the case box. Right. Yeah. Um, so there, there's a there will be a few RDY uh, SKUs mixed in over here. Mm -hmm. um, most of them are going to be the retail system, just because in terms of like how many of the same exact build we would ship in retail is way more than RDY, where there's like. 20 or 30 different variants, whereas in retail, it's like everything is kind of hyper-focused on like five. Yeah. Yeah. I, I do, I, I, one, one thought that I've had, uh, because I mentioned this, uh, about um, glass being, you know, more expensive and heavier than metal mesh. Mm -hmm. So going with something like like the, the, the slate mesh, slate six mesh, right? And taking off half of that on this scale, do you actually see a noticeable change <laughs> in weight of like we these, could, these things that are shipped I, sh I, I should actually check. It's not something that we've, necessarily looked into. The thing, other thing with the Trace 6 mesh is that the case itself is a little bit smaller oh, okay. um, than the previous generation. So in terms of like uh, like pallet packing efficiency, like you can get a few more of them on right. the same amount of pallet space. Um, but yeah, it'd be an interesting thing to look at, right? Like at the volume that we would ship if, if an extra you know, quarter pound 
makes of material makes that much of a difference. I'm sure, like I said, it gets obscured with all the other stuff. Like the motherboard choice can offset, right? Like right, <laughs> and then that. the difference is gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And with motherboards getting more and more expensive too. Yeah, like, that's not slowing down, is it? Mm -hmm. It's speeding up. It seems. Um, so this would back here through these doors would be like our secondary warehouse. We probably right. won't go back there just because there's forklifts and stuff running around all the time. Yeah. Um, but that's just sort of like spillover uh, for all this stuff. All right, you know what? It probably also looks identical in there. All right, guys, we're here in the secondary warehouse. It's like the first one, except it's the second one. <laughs> Pretty cool. Thank you for bringing us here. <laughs> um, so yeah, we can skip that. Yeah, and, and, and like I said, most of that is, is also case storage. Right. Cases take up a lot of space. We actually do have an off-site warehouse that we keep most of the empty cases in, just because like, you know, cases just take up way more space than... than so I'm just gonna take this little sticker right here. <laughs> I'll put it right on that one. So you know which one you send me. <laughs> oh, hey, who's gonna get the Braithorn one, Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. that'd be kind of neat. Yeah. They get a prize if they do? Yeah, right. yeah, I'll say hi. I'll be like, hi, I'm Braithorn. Maybe if you got the... the uh, wait a minute, so you could do that, and if they actually respond to you, I'll ship them a people. If they see it and they take a picture of it, is one of these little tiny ones? What do you think? Yeah, you want, I'll yeah. do it. These sure, are actually sure. meant to be for fan hubs. <laughs> That's oh, what those okay, are for. Yeah. yeah, so people can actually make them their fan hubs. But yeah, I'll, I'll do it. Just watch for it if you got one of those. <laughs> if you're one of the lucky ones to get one. All right. So we can now we're kind of done being out of order with the production cycle. Uh, so you can see here, kind of behind you, um, these are. Uh, pallets of the raw materials or the, right. the parts for cases, right? So you got motherboards, graphics cards, probably power supplies, hard drive, things like that. Um, this would be what is like a, what we would call a multiple would look like before it starts getting worked on. So like something like that goes into a retail system where they're building them in batches of 20 or 40. Um, yeah. That you would just sort of have this pallet of all the same parts. Um, when an assembler is available, they'll grab one of these pallets and forklift them over to their station and they, you know, Gets Crank them out. Working on them. Yeah. Um, a, on the other side, we have the custom orders on our website. We call them singles, where uh, that's like a full custom order that's gone through the .com site. Um, those will usually get put into like a single box because all the parts can fit in one box, and they'll go over here somewhere and build them. So this is our main production line. Okay. Um, so after the, all the parts get picked from the assembly, or the inventory warehouse behind the wall, okay, there, all this stuff gets picked, brought back out here. and uh, these are the guys that'll work on assembling them. But yeah, so uh, assembly, they put all this stuff together here. Um, how, how uh, for, for, for my own ego, how often do you have pe people with a camera coming through here? It's been a while. I okay. would say pre-pandemic, we probably had someone maybe twice a year. Wow, um, yeah, okay. But this, I think other than one other, yeah, you're the second person since 2020 to come through with a yeah, well, camera. <laughs> and everyone watching, so. <laughs> right now, most of the folks here are gonna be working on multiples, right? So those are the uh, retail systems where it's, you know, copy paste the same spec over and over and over again. So right. you can see like someone's done uh, pre-assembly on. Uh, you get like UDs, deep cool. Deepcool. Oh, is that deep cool? Uh, yeah, deep yeah cool. that's just the cooler. Air coolers, yeah. yeah. Those are going to be your your, your lower TDP set uh, systems. Oh yeah, that'll yeah. probably some kind of uh, i five non K uh, based on the cooler. I, actually, there was something I was wondering. Mm -hmm. You know, the option that's now available to ship it with the GPU out of the system. Mm -hmm. uh, do you still Instapack like any? Is there a tower cooler that because tower coolers shipping uh, tower coolers we, is also a stressful we, thing. If we did still have tower coolers, we probably would use Instapack, right. um, but we don't right now um, because they do cause too many problems. Yeah. Um, we may go back to them now that we have AM5, because right. one of the other issues like a 7, was that yeah. um, the uh, the old AM4 socket, the, the PGA socket, yeah. the tower cooler it would, just would pull, the yep. so pull the processor out. Yeah. And so we kind of had to stop using them for a while. Yeah, AIOs are just so much easier to ship. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, if we do, if, on, hypothetically, if we did have a tower cooler and a separate graphics card, we would still use the Instapack because otherwise the cooler can bend. So oh, yeah. real quick, then, um, 
this will be what we call our QC repair area. So anytime that a uh, system gets built, it gets tested and there's a problem with it, right? If it doesn't post or, you know, if there's a fan backwards, I don't know, whatever it is. Right. Um, these guys uh, are the guys who will there take it, diagnose it, repair it, and they also will keep a log and they'll let us know uh, if they'd start seeing a problem occurring um, frequently. Right. That maybe it's not a poor quality part, maybe it's a bad configuration that we didn't catch. Right, so right. That's, that's what these guys are doing here. And these, this is the uh, QC and burn-in side of things. So uh, this stress, is where yeah. they'll install windows, drivers, uh, and then run the stress test. Right now, all of these are going through their windows installation. That's why it just looks like a command prompt. Right, um, you're just, you're, yeah, you're basically moving an image onto there mm -hmm. of it, yeah. Now, how often do you upgrade uh, update the image? Are there was just uh, like a recent big update to Windows 11? I would say it's around once a month. I, I feel like we're just in the, it just, it, it, it's, it's really crazy to see this, the, the scale of it because in some, you know, smaller system integrators, you'll have like, oh, this is our, this is our, our countertop here where mm -hmm. we do our, our burn in and this is, or this is the two tables that we have for it. This is, this is a massive operation yeah. here. And this is the slow season. So during, <laughs> during the ramp up to Black Friday, this whole area got kind of gets retooled um, in order to, uh, crank out those um, the pre-built systems right, right to try and bulk up as much as we can so that we don't run into backlogs yeah um, and during when we're running two full shifts we can do about a thousand computers a day wow um, wow to Black Friday and Jesus that's and that's Jesus. just that's just here in this it, it, I don't know if, if you guys last uh, last year during Christ, the Christmas season it was when I, I the previous year before that I was not really a wasn't known for this yet. But last year I was like, look, you only have a certain amount of time and every week time was growing shorter towards Christmas and basically you were, you guys were pretty much all I could recommend. And I was like, don't worry, it's gonna be good. It's gonna be awesome, they're gonna love it. And you get it in like five days or mm -hmm. six days. So here, check it out. Um, but that's the thing is you guys are able to, to do that and many cannot do it on that, in, in that, on this scale in that amount of time mm -hmm. with the level of quality. Yeah, we still we still do, in the in the past, we have actually had issues with um, uh, lead times right. for stuff at the holiday, but we, that's why, again, we try to shift most of the attention towards the RDY systems, right. uh, just because we can kind of plan around that um, and versus the custom configurator where it's not just about how quickly can we build systems, it's can we still get the parts? Right. Because the demand on the parts also surges during that, of that course. time period. Of course. So is there much more to show? Or are we moving over to the stream area? Now? I think that's about it for production. The rest is just sort of packing and shipping. Um, there's also our tech support, which we'll walk through on the way back to the stream okay. area. Um, but otherwise, that's most of the facility. Jerry Cole. Oh. Yo, what's happening? What's up, man? Good to see you. John, how you been? Doing all right, how about you? Yeah, good, good. Right on. Oh, that looks like those colors, man. What's going on? Hey. So, yeah, 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 yeah. I think I'll hand things off to uh, to John and his crew. But thanks you know, a bunch thanks for the tour, for man. Checking everything out. Okay, of course. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to an uh, an, an impromptu build stream. We have a very special treat for you. Uh, I would like to welcome our friend Braythorn. Hi. Woo! Okay, hope you guys got to catch the stream. Maybe we'll cut some of that. If you all give us a bot, maybe we can cut up yeah, sure. in there, a couple, couple pieces of it. But it was a lot of fun. And of course, John, it's great to see you. Mm -hmm. You and too. Meet in person for the first Absolutely. time. Absolutely. And uh, and here, of all places. So yeah, thanks for having me on. And we got to build this. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got to put all that together. And I did all the fun stuff. And he did all the cable management. It was great. I had a great time. Thank you for coming. We appreciate having you here. Yeah, and I uh, hope to come back soon. And this. Oh, yeah, show this, me the up. This is coming with me this time. Right on. That's that. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Like and sub.